morning guys. Yeah, I know today most of you are going out to vote 29th of May, but uh, we're also voting for the sardine. And we're all anticipating when they're going to come. Uh, there's been lots of action in the trans sky, and you've seen over the last couple of weeks, birds all over the place, dolphins, even sardines washing up on some of the beaches, whether they were dead or alive, doesn't really matter, but they were sardine. That's the most important thing. And we see a lot more action. But those are not the main shows. Those are just pilot shows coupled with a lot of bait fish and they migrating north. And that's a very good sign uh, for this main show to be migrating north. We see the birds now starting to move back south and the birds are looking for the bigger shows. And hopefully we should start seeing a bigger show in the next couple of weeks and we are waiting for them because with them come the sharks, the dolphins and all other sorts of activity. Uh, us as netters and the anglers, we're all waiting anxiously for the sardine. So my prediction is two to three weeks we should see a lot more action on the sardine. But for now, we can just enjoy all those videos and all those clips that are coming from the Trans Sky and uh, East London and showing us all this action and just making us get all excited. The adrenaline is pumping and we are waiting. The guys are swatting the traces, they, the rods, their reels. Uh, some guys are even playing the swim baits out. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But yeah, I would say next two to three weeks we'll see a lot more action. Remember, absolutely nothing wrong with posting information on birds diving, dolphin activity. That's what we want to see. That's what we want. This gets everyone hyped up for the season. I'm going to be going into the trans sky within the next week or so. I'll probably fly in, which is better, we'll cover more area uh, to see what is happening in the trans sky. Uh, we've got dive charters that are diving in the Palmy area, and they will give us a lot more accurate information on what sardines, what shoals, whether they bait fish, the shark activity and what speeds they're moving at, what's the water temperature, how close they are. So we'll have all that information uh, within the next couple of days. And we can give you a more accurate uh, estimation. And I say estimation is for when the sardine will hit the case and the But for now, everyone get ready. When you see the netters moving up towards Port Edward, and you'll see it on social media, guys will post pictures of boats and 4x4 moving up there. That is about the right time for you to start migrating <laughs> to the south coast. Book your accommodation, get your vehicles all serviced, pack up your boxes, get your tackle ready, and we'll see you down in Port Edward within the next couple of weeks. So from me guys, I wish all of you a wonderful and safe sardine run. And to the netters, hope you guys have an awesome season. And let's all have fun, respect each other, and have a jaw on the beach. Sardine Run 2024, covered to you by ASFN, and we'll give you the most accurate and up-to-date information on the site. Good morning, guys. First of July, on the boat out here at Caradine, and it's a sardine boat. Yeah, what a pleasure to be back on the vessel. Uh, always this time of the year is very exciting for me and I'm sure for everybody else because, yo, that's our home. Uh, this is when the silver gold comes through with all the sharks, uh, edibles like your garlic, smoked kuda, tuna. Everybody's going to have a great time. So yeah, first of June first launch uh, with the sardine boat and happy to be on board and yeah keep you guys updated follow us on ASFN uh, on the Kingfisher Dawa uh, Facebook page and, and ASFN YouTube and Facebook page and we will keep you up to date on where the sardine is where it's being netted and where all the fish are yeah so yeah guys See you in the next couple of weeks. Morning guys. We uh, it's the 31st of June. 
we're on the South Coast Road going to Port Edwards. We're following some netters. And that's probably one of your good indicators to see where there's action. And then obviously the various social media platforms. Now, you guys know on ASFN, we'll do our best to uh, actually uh, keep you guys in the loop of where the fish are. We've got Jace that's on top of the sods because he, he's got one of his own netting teams. And uh, we'll be giving you regular feedback on, on actual information, not hearsay or um, maybe there's saws there or some, you know, <laughs> red eye pockets or mackerel pockets. The guys get very excited and stuff. Yesterday there were reports of guys getting quite a bit of game fish here on bait shoals. Kamara and them are actually at Shirley Avenue in Ramsgate. They're seeing small bait pockets with dolphins and fish mashing. Um, but it's about 200 meters out. So we're following, we carried on past them. Uh, we're following these netters to see where they're going. They may be, you know, at this stage of the game, it's very early days. So uh, we don't know if they've reached our shores. There's a lot of reports that there's pilot shoals and pockets coming through, but we haven't actually physically seen them, so we don't know how true it is. So we're following these guys. They might also just go to a spot, a central spot, where they can hang around and wait for information or a good lookout area where they can see the boat shoals. Uh, coming through and maybe they when they get in range they can have a shot at it. Um, I suspect they're going down to Port Edward because um, there's very few spots here. You can we passed South Broome already, it's on up here now. So I reckon they're going down to Port, Port Edward. Um, there's also a launch site there. Look, the sardine netters are allowed to launch at most beaches through the sardine run. Um, we haven't seen the shark nets being lifted yet. They're still out. Um, so yeah, I think it's the very, very early stages with a lot of hope that they might have reached our shores with that big, big southwest we had yesterday. There's also a fairly big northeast coming through today and then tomorrow another big southwest. So that might bring on everything, all the action, and uh, we'll keep you in the loop. So yeah, make sure you subscribe to our channel through this period and hit the bell notification button to be updated. When we upload something, you immediately get notified um, and it can keep you in the action. So if you're interested in the sardine run, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We'll only share actual, real information, um, no speculation or hearsay. And uh, yeah, let's hold thumbs and hope something today already comes through. of May ticket officially the sardine run has started in Port Edward we're down here at Port Edward we took a chance drove down saw some netters followed them now I just spoke to Jace as well they did net um, some of the guys did net 80 crates here and some a bit less so it's just a bit far off there were big shoals here on the right now yeah all the way to Splash Rock and then they're moving into the bay some smaller uh, pockets of the pilot shoals are coming into the bay here. Yeah. Very exciting, you can see there's quite a few netters on the beach. Uh, shark sports here, so I take it they've lifted the nets. I don't know, maybe today or maybe earlier already. Uh, there were a lot of speculation yesterday and so, uh, spottings of bait shoals. But uh, we can confirm it's all sorts. They actually netted them. There's uh, still big stretches of pockets running here. at put in with quite a bit. Some pieces broke off close enough for the netters to net. They need a, you know, they need those pockets to be about, I think, 300 meters and to be able to net them. And I don't think there'll be a lot of netting going forward because there's a big, well, this northeast is picking up to about 40 k's an hour. But uh, yeah, it started, officially started, and uh, we'll uh, we'll keep you guys in the loop where we can with real information. So make sure you subscribed to our channel and hit the bell notification to get real time updates and whenever we go live we'll also do a lot of live videos this is just our normal video we're filming and uh, yeah 
If there's any action, we'll put it out for you. Edward Ski Boat Club. As you can see they're busy pulling out some more nets. I think about 150 crates already this morning on the first run. And now they're busy with some more. Look, the sea is starting to pick up. We've got that big nor'easter coming through uh, a bit later today. So I don't know how much netting will still happen. And we haven't can't say there's sharks and stuff because no anglers here yet. So guys, if you if you're not at work can put a line with some fresh sides and uh, look for the action. viewers let us know there's some pockets by to 20 we just saw netters in uh, Ibadin Pamula area uh, we saw netters chasing past we'll see where they turn off maybe they turn off at Pamula and uh, so that's that's part of the sardine run we'll just run behind them and see where they go we've been looking for birds all this whole morning there were some birds working here we went down uh, they disappeared, so it wasn't a big bait shoal. Could have been anything. But the one at 20, I believe, has been going for, for a little while already. It doesn't look like a big shoal. But we'll see where the netters are going. Just keep an eye on them. There's <laughs> five cars between us. So we'll have a look. See, it's Saturday, the 5th of June. And we're hoping things are turning from today onwards on the Sardine Run. We had that horrible weather. And uh, cleared up yesterday morning, there were quite a bit of activity in Margate with the guys netting with the cast nets and having some good fun. The netters uh, put some nets out, but they didn't really get much. Um, so it was a bit of a, you know, a small pocket of sardines that broke off and washed into the bay there at Margate. Um, apparently this morning, again, there were a couple of cast netters that got some sardines there. So there were still some around. But uh, yeah, it sounds like we might be in the mid-south coast, might be operating today. Um, there's much better visibility than yesterday. So if there's shoals in certain areas, there's patches, it's cleaned up quite nicely. So if swords come through those patches, we'll be able to see them. But there are still some darker patches like here, Umzumbi River Mouth, quite brown. Um, Stabao looks clean. Point. 
So we'll have a look see where those guys can't launch here at um, Zumbi. So if they're going to launch, they'll go to to Pumula. I don't think they'll hit the single road if they were going further down than Port Chepston. So let's have a look see. I'm going to give Jace a call. It's a red boat. Huh? The boats had to launch at Pamula, but they were sort of stuck behind the rock at Banana Beach. So from Pamula we drove down and when we arrived at Banana Beach, the first net was busy being pulled out. It wasn't a lot of swords, but it's extremely difficult with the dirty water to find them and put the net around them at the right time. There's a lot of hard work guys, a lot of preparation and not easy at all. of June, some action here, they launched it for they got a small pocket here at uh, Banana Beach, managed to get out there, that's difficult access for them with the vehicles, only a few crates, I reckon about 10 crates, um, there's more boats, there's one in the surf here waiting and there's one in the back, One is, I think one has gone around, what's the same boat hanging in the back that just went to check, there's small pockets moving up from 20 side, so there might be action this whole section from Banana Paula to uh, to Hibberdeen and even Ikafa that uh, there might be action today. I'll definitely, uh, you know, we do live updates so you guys if you subscribe to the channel you'll receive those just hit the bell notification button to receive them. So we're looking for the fish. So far no fish with them, no sharks and as soon as we get that You'll be the first to know. We got some fish with Delta Sats here at Banana Beach. We got a guest angler, Dowry. Uh, right? That brought some Dowry for us. <laughs> <laughs> so we can catch some fish. And we're going to get some baits out. Uh, I'm going to show the gentleman how to hook up a sardine. Now, when you got fresh sardines like this, the bellies are still intact. Try not to damage your bellies. If you damage your belly, expose it to the small little fish. They'll come and feed and peck on this as quick as possible. So we're going to keep them as whole as possible. Simple, there's two ways. One, you can go from the bottom, through the head, or through the eye. So I basically do this, and bring it up there, at the strongest part of the head. And that keeps the sardine whole. You can throw this sardine as, just as, as is, is single, as and you'll get a pull, right? And we're going to go for the shark, we're going to put a bigger bait, so we're going to turn. The next one, I'm going to turn through the eye, right? All that does is makes me put the sardine back to back, right? And the last one, I'm going to go through the lip again. So that's basically our bait. A little bit of cotton to streamline it. And a little bit of cotton to protect the bellies. Look, is nice and proud. 
That's all we need, right? When you throw this to a streamline, you'll get a couple of extra meters. Sometimes that's all you need. And as you can see, guys, only the best. Only the best. Don't come under guns. If you want to catch that's a Landis big fish, <laughs> come with the right tackle. And here, Daiwa, Daiwa all the way. <laughs> my first throw with this salt ego. I've never thrown it before. So, like they say, how for make a badger. But this is a brilliant breeze. That's how it performed in the past. Now even though the bay wasn't looking that nice, it does no harm putting a bait out. You never know what's lurking in the front here in the sardine run. There's no rules when it comes to this season. You can quite easily hook pretty much anything. And then all of a sardine, the boat drops a net as the shoal lifts up and almost comes around the corner. Unfortunately, the south-north current didn't push this quick enough and this net got stuck in the rocks and tore open. This was a good sized net. Yeah guys, uh, joint effort here uh, by these and GS Fisheries. The fish is far on the back line behind some rocks. Uh, we joined the team and took a shot. The fish is in the bag. Now it's basically just landing the fish. It's sitting, look at it, it's looking sitting perfect in the pockets. So basically just landing the fish and getting onto the beach. Right guys, banana beach, fish is in the bag. Uh, we are lucky with a big swell, the fish ran into the net. So that fish is straight to the bag and has been pulled onto the beach. Looks like quite a decent net. Finally some action. The season is already two weeks old and there's really been a little fish. But as you can see the guys are having a jaw and we want the public to have a jaw. They put a couple of hundred people here that's gonna have a lekker day today with sardines. And again, this net got stuck on some rocks at the bottom of this bay. And the guys have to think quick to try their best to recover it. A small hole in this net can mean losing all the sardines. A lot of hard work to get that fish. But yeah, had to save the day there. The fish was stuck on the rock. Got to the bottom and just lifted it up. It's out. It's a very small percentage of sardines that gets netted during a sardine run. Even when the weather is perfect, conditions are perfect and the sods are here for a month. The first net was out early and this time at Pumula Beach. Again there was a large shoal of sardines that sat behind the point and timing had to be perfect that when they move into the bay and to the surface to make sure they get the net around.
Guys, yeah, we're down here at Pumula, and a nice big pocket of fish came around the corner. Now three boats in the water, and I managed to get into the third shot. And I think I had a third time lucky because one guy missed, one guy got fish. But we got a decent net. I'll say about 150 crates. A lot of hard work. The current screaming, the brown water, reef, sharks. So every bit of danger you can think of is there now. The guys work extremely hard. A couple of guys could have lost their lives for starting today because of the traditional conditions and the brown water, the rocks. But yeah, we came up trumps and one beautiful net this morning, as you can see. So, it's going to be another two or three hours to float this and then, then we'll try some fishing and look for some sharks. nets in the morning there was no shark activity in the bay or any game fish that came in either guys fresh sods just organized for me we're gonna buy tight now fresh bait <laughs> Guys, yeah, action here at Pumula. I'm here with uh, Kiran, huh? Yeah. Kiran from Toji. That looks like a decent fish. He's got the right tackle, as you guys can see. Proper yeah. sardine on tackle. We are ready, yeah. Uh, what are you expecting? Maybe to be a grey? Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully a decent grey. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. So, yeah, finally action picked up here. So, someone's eventually tight. There's more rods in the water going in now. So, we all hope. We all can go tight, just like Kiran. So, all the best. And thanks, man. I'll see you when the fish is in the front. Uh, we got the fish right here on the on the on the backwash, giving us a hard time here. Uh, the wash is quite deep as well, so the fish is just hanging there. We're back and forth, but it's in grabbing distance now. So we just need to get a hold of that needle, and we can pull it forward. We've got plenty of guys helping, which is good. We like that in the side. Not all the guys are coming together, and uh, it's not being a competitive thing. The guys are enjoying the sport and helping everyone, so that's good. Uh, kid is doing well. We're, we're fighting this fish. Like we did, we swam the fish with the current down south, right to the corner here, 
easy land. Shot, guys. From early morning, I could see the sardines being smashed in front of Hibberdeen and further down south. We arrived at Hibberdeen Beach and the nets were already on the beach. And of course, we made our way to the rocks as soon as possible, as you could just see the shark action from early morning already. The sardines were full up, right in the back line behind the rocks. You could literally lob a bait into them. One of the boats had difficulty with its outboard and Jace was quickly to jump in to go and assist them. Uh, so high five! Jace is right though. Yeah, that's a Okay guys, when that fish, I had to tighten up, you saw that it was getting closer to the drum there. And uh, looks like you know, something could have swum in it. Could be a knot pull. If it's a knot pull, or the knot broke, Jace will never hear the end of this. He's right. Uh, first time I play with this whole Saltiga 2020 and <laughs> it's got the power, no problem. I managed to stop that fish, but with those big head shakes in the beginning, it popped the knot or popped the braid. Um, everything back on the reel, so he lost the leader. Uh, probably the top shot, a little bit, probably got 20 meters top shot or something on here, I don't know. And as these baits were dropped, it was between 3 and 15 minutes, and the guys just went tight. The J braid 65 pounds diameter and braking capacity exceeds 80 pounds. Yeah, guys, so I dropped it. Not even, I would say, 30 seconds, and I got to pick up. So my drag is quite tight here. Because I've got about 500 meters of J braid 65 pound. Full length. So, yeah. When hooking these bigger fish, they take their first and sometimes their second run. Leave them a while out there to see which direction they're going. It is important to identify the best possible areas to land these fish beforehand and then start moving your fish in that direction slowly. But letting it swim out on its first and second run allows you to get through the other lines and away from all the other sharks and action that could cut you off. Okay guys, as you can see, Miami here at Ibedin with the swords coming up close from early this morning. Uh, sharks with the nets when they netted. Uh, smashing. Jace is in, Dre is in, another guy's in and they tangled unfortunately and then another's in as well. Um, I haven't put a bait out again. I had Jace's rod when he swam to, to help the boat. Uh, but uh, uh, initially there were a lot of uh, jumping sharks, some spinners and uh, back tips. And now the guys are intertwining here. Andre did a great job of getting out of the crowd and getting his fish to move left. Jace did the same by getting his fish to go right towards a smaller bay on the right hand side. But it wasn't long and there were six guys on at the same time. It wouldn't be clever to put more baits out while so many guys are fighting fish. After playing this fish very well, Andre was the first to land a nice dusky of 260 centimeters in excess of 270 kilos on the grinder. Job well done. How's it, guys? So, yeah, I got my first break for the starting run. Laka. It's actually my second one, by the way. So, yesterday we fished that splash rock and I got one about 130 kilos. But this is the one that I came for. Yeah. 
Unfortunately, Jace's got cut off by another angler and most of the fish on the point were lost. When we left, there was only one guy still on. We quickly received news of a pocket stuck in between the rocks at Cracker Bay and it wasn't possible for us to get there quickly but through the courtesy of Aloe's resort they allowed us to park there and we managed to get down to the bay quickly. Five minutes guys! That's how long it took me to land the fish. <laughs> when we arrived there Jace already landed a spinner shark of over 100 kilos in five minutes. The sharks were wild in the shore break and you can literally choose which one you want to hook by just lobbing a bait in front of it. Unfortunately with all the action and all the sharks swimming around it is not easy to keep them on. This is how you should see this audience. It's unbelievable. It's real. Oh, there we go. I'm on my bait again. Two of them. Two of them. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Right? Two of them swam over my bait now. We just love it. Yeah, they're on my bait. There's so much sarge here that I don't think you can even pick up your bait. So let's hope. Let's hope. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh. He doesn't take the hook, he takes a spot. They didn't take the whole bunch. Let's see now, let's see now. Take it, take it. There we go. Again, I get a little tug. I think they're pulling the swords one by one off my hook. Gee, worse. <laughs> It's just an awesome day. One of my best fishing days. I'm happy of the last uh, flicking baits with no sinker, 10 meters, and just having fun with the public, fellow anglers. It, it is a blast. Guys, if you haven't tried this, do it. I'm gonna get a bike just now. Just watch. The shark swimming to my bait. Ah, it's going past my bait. I uh, probably didn't put enough curry powder. I'll try again. Guys, I'm fishing with a lock drag. <laughs> He's still taking one. This is full, full drag, guys. <laughs> Whoopa, come here! Full full drag. Andre, what's that? 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 What's 
mistake, there's a forms an L shape here, the reef in the back. So mine didn't go out of the bay. Took me straight onto that reef. But absolute mayhem, fantastic. Landed all by himself, the second fish of the day. Lovely grey of two, six, seven centimeters. tackle they decided to lock up on this fish completely so that it doesn't get to the back reef and stays in the bay so that he can try and land it as quick as possible he managed to keep the fish pretty much on the lip but this fish was so green that it, it still had the good fight in it for quite some time on the lip And I just love to the to the big one. No, but you straighten the circle. This is a 12 Yeah. That's how yes, hard he pulled it. Yeah, so I've got 100 pound J braid there, and I had to lock my drag. Because that reef. Yeah. Another reef, yeah. Now that's, that's nice. That's tough pulling it that oh. hard, eh? Yeah, because they're green. Good Between each time I grab the braid. The yeah. grease, green, green, green. And that was, I had like four sardines on the hook and I just lobbed it, not even two meters. And you hold on. But look at this, guys. This is a tuna circle. And uh, to the end, it was still hooked. It was landed on this hook as it is. Yeah. How's that? Very good. Yeah. Awesome time. Guys, if you're not here, you must make your way down here. It's an awesome experience. It's actually my first time on the sardine rug. And it's something else. It's unbelievable. So, Laka, thanks a lot. Cheers. He managed to land that fish in 35 minutes. And the rest of the team moved to Pamula where there was a lot of action. Kumaran was already there and managed to land a reggae and another smaller dusky. Great footage of shoals, apparently at Ifafa with thousands of sharks coming. Have a look at this. Credit to whoever took it. Unfortunately, we don't have the details. Thank you guys for watching and please remember to subscribe and hit the bell notification button so you can receive updates every time we upload a video. On some of the other beaches, just north of Pamula, you get Governor and Chris Ayers had a lot of fun getting a total of four big duskies and you're getting with a lovely tiger shark.